The Victorian era is arguably the most underrated chapter of history. Despite featuring more change and progress than any other period except the modern era, between the Napoleonic and World Wars, mankind reinvented itself, discovered and questioned the laws of science and government while looking inward. Those who were willing to adapt to this new world reaped benefits on an industrial scale, while those who resisted change were swept away. So let's dive in with this list of 10 events that defined this fascinating era. Number 1. The First Opium War, 1839-1842 We begin with the event that would set the stage for the era, a war that saw the British Empire clash with Qing China. The Industrial Revolution, which began in Britain almost a century earlier, fueled a giant need for commodities, many of which were found in China. By the 19th century, Europe made numerous discoveries, reigniting the love for astronomy, archaeology, literature, music, fashion, chemistry, alchemy, the occult, and so much more. Efficiency and profit were paramount, as the positive feedback loop, accelerated by the reinvention of cement, glass making, road building, steel manufacturing, and most of all the steam engine, drove the demand for goods from across the globe. Social status was defined by consumerism and the display of luxury goods, and China was the main exporter of some of the most desired commodities, such as silk, tea, and porcelain. To balance its trade deficit, Britain sold large quantities of opium, but when the narcotics were banned by the Chinese government, war erupted. The Mighty Dragon, which was one of the biggest economic powerhouses of the world at the time, but was technologically backward, was humiliated and forced to open its ports and cede the island of Hong Kong, beginning what is now known as the Century of Humiliation. Within 60 years, China would have to deal with the Taiping, Nian, and Du Wenxu rebellions, the Second Opium War, the Dungan Revolts, and the Boxer Rebellion, which ravaged the country and cost millions of lives as the state struggled to reform. During the same period, the Spanish and Ottoman empires suffered similar fates, creating a trend and vastly readjusting the global power balance. Number 2. The Mines Act of 1842 The booming free market economy drove scientific innovation, as mankind gazed upwards at a blackened sky and moved into the cities, searching for opportunities within factories. The numerous inventions and regime changes would seem unrecognizable to the previous generation, but for all of its splendor and progress, there was also a world of misery, built on the backbone of lower classes with next to no social mobility, forced to live in terrible conditions. Automation cost millions of agricultural jobs and drove people to the urban factories. To illustrate these circumstances, we need only look at the vast child labour pool employed in the British coal mines. Children worked between 11 and 18 hours in coal mines daily, since their size allowed them to pass through smaller spaces, infested with rats. In 1838, a storm in Barnsley caused a stream to flood a shaft, drowning 26 children, 11 girls aged from 8 to 16, and 15 boys between 9 and 12. This event caught the eye of Queen Victoria, who ordered an inquiry, which confirmed the widespread use of young boys and girls as coal workers. This resulted in the Mines Act of 1842, which prohibited the employment of women underground and set the minimum age for boys at 10 years old. This also illustrates another aspect of Victorian society and how it viewed women. Lord Ashley deliberately appealed to Victorian prudery focusing on girls and women wearing trousers and working bare-breasted in the presence of boys and men, which made girls unsuitable for marriage and unfit to be mothers. It is easy to forget that women of this era were not meant to leave their households without a male escort, or reveal their breasts even when breastfeeding, the latter of which led to the death of thousands of babies due to the flawed design of the newly invented baby bottles. Number 3 Revolutions of 1848 Despite these horrible conditions and high infant mortality rates, populations rose alongside food prices. In an effort to increase efficiency, many states turned to single-crop farming, which substantially increased production 
at the expense of a crisis whenever the crop failed. The most famous of these cases was the Irish potato famine in 1845. That and other crop failures led to the largest wave of revolutions Europe had ever seen. In 1848, the middle and working classes rose up against the European monarchies. Paris, Vienna, Rome, Milan, Venice, Frankfurt, Budapest, Prague, Bucharest and many others fell to violent mobs who demanded more rights and protections of those rights. Nationalism ignited as Poles, Hungarians, Italians, Germans, Romanians and many others rode the wave as the news spread that powerful monarchs turned tail and ran from their fancy palaces. But the network of alliances created by the Congress of Vienna aimed at suppressing such revolutions by any means necessary was still strong and Russia played the role of the enforcer. Thousands were killed and many more exiled ensuring the return to the status quo, while those who could immigrated to the United States, strengthening the country. Some rights and liberties were secured, particularly in France and Denmark. But once these ideas were out of the bottle, there was no real return. Within the next 25 years, most of the ideas the revolutionists of 1848 fought for would be achieved, and the Communist Manifesto written that same year by Karl Marx would eventually become the most influential piece of literature of the 19th and 20th centuries. Number 4. Unifications of Italy and Germany, 1848 to 1871. The unification of both Italy and Germany initially failed during the wave of revolutions, but that failure taught a valuable lesson. Unity could only be achieved by blood and iron. The ideas of nationalism persisted but the idealism that came with it was replaced by pragmatic real politic. At the time, both nations were incredibly decentralized and stuck between larger empires that had been centralizing for centuries. Great Britain, Russia, France, Spain and Austria could easily exert power over the young, would-be nations politically, economically and even culturally. Nationalism gave the spark that was able to bring together millions of people but it would take the genius of men like Cavour, Garibaldi, Bismarck and Moltke to direct it and the interests of the greater powers towards unification. This was a long and complicated game of chess, which ended up with two new nations victorious over France and Austria, changing the balance of power in Europe and beyond. Number 5. The Crimean War, 1854-1856 the nephew of Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleon III, was elected as president amidst the turmoil of the 1848 revolution, but proclaimed himself as emperor of the French only four years later. His goal was to return France to its former glory, and domestically he enacted great reforms that modernized the country. Internationally, he positioned himself as the defender of Christendom, and to that end, defended the Papal States against Italian revolutionaries. Around this time, the Ottoman Empire, which had once threatened the whole of Europe, couldn't even fight off Egypt and had to be saved by Russia and the West. As a result, their markets were opened and invited the interests of the great powers. In a show of dominance, Napoleon III asserted himself over the churches in Palestine, taking the role of protector of its Christian populace from Russia. When Russia invaded the Ottomans yet again, it found itself attacked by an alliance of French, Ottoman, British and Sardinian armies. The industry had adapted to the new era, but the militaries of every nation involved soon realized they were outdated in every way imaginable. Ironclad ships decimated entire fleets, cavalry charged into certain death, and cholera claimed far more lives than gunpowder. Russia was isolated diplomatically, and this war also showed the technological and economic weakness of Russia. After the war, Alexander II abolished serfdom to improve the mobilization base, and went on a spree of other reforms. Britain, who also noticed problems in its military, removed the sale of officer commissions, while other countries recognized the benefits of trench warfare and blind artillery fire, as well as the need for better field medicine. Number 6. The American Civil War, 1861-1865 The 19th century saw the complete transformation of the United States. Manifest destiny was adopted after the massive expansion west at the expense of Spain and the First Nations. 
This created new states, which upset the balance between the states that allowed slavery and those that didn't. A massive amount of settlers moved into these states that were allowed to vote on what kind of state they wanted to be, which eventually led to violence. The Confederate states of the South had a much smaller population, and were not nearly as industrialized as the Northern Union states. Despite starting the war, the South was on the defensive, and only thanks to high morale and experienced generals like Robert E. Lee were they able to prolong the war, making it the most deadly conflict in US history. The age of the Industrial War had come, as cone-shaped bullets replaced the ball-shaped ones of the past, and muskets were replaced by rifles. Railways started playing a crucial role in logistics and mobilization. However, outdated strategies saw thousands of soldiers march into landmines and gatling gunfire. But yet again, disease and wound management were the biggest killers. Both sides lost twice as many soldiers to illness and infection, as outdated or lack of field medicine failed to keep up with the rising number of soldiers quickly being deployed with the use of railways. Latrines were not separated from the camp, amputation mortality was as high as 80%, and by the end, the United States was profoundly changed. The victorious Union abolished slavery and entered the Reconstruction Era. Number 7. Germ Theory, 1861 The past two centuries are marked by innovation and scientific development, which makes it easy to forget that progress is not a straight line. Science had several setbacks after the fall of Assyria and Egypt, but the most notable one came with the fall of Rome. The early Roman Empire improved many aspects of human life, including medicine, writing manuscripts that described surgical operations mankind didn't perform again until the late 19th century. The Victorian era saw life expectancy break the Roman record for the first time. Thousands of diseases were discovered, surgical tools were sterilized, anesthesia was discovered, epidemics averted, vaccines were created, and in 1861, Louis Pasteur's germ theory revolutionized the world. Thanks to his work, as well as that of Joseph Lister, John Snow, Robert Liston, Nicolai Prigov, Florence Nightingale, Robert Koch, and many others, humanity made more progress in medical technologies in 50 years than in the last millennium. The population skyrocketed as a result of the improved general health, prevention, and treatments that were developed throughout the world. As a result, the Russo-Japanese War of 1904 became the first modern war, where more soldiers lost their lives to combat rather than disease. Number 8. The Meiji Restoration, 1868 In 1854, Commodore Matthew Perry used gunboat diplomacy to open up the isolationist Tokugawa shogunate. Coupled with the outrage at the British intervention in China, the Japanese nobility grew discontent with the passive government and decided to take action into their own hands. The ensuing Boshin War divided Japan in two, as the imperial faction fought for control against the shogunate. Yet again we see the impacts of the Industrial Revolution, as the imperial faction using modern weaponry decimated the samurai and ushered in a new era in the region. The social structure was reshaped, railways were built, foreign advisors were hired, and the seeds were planted for a whole new identity based on nationality. Education emphasized Japanese culture and standardized the language, blending Western elements with traditional values a blend that was also seen in art and architecture. The process of modernization and centralization was particularly powerful in the military, where conscripts replaced the outdated samurai and even defeated them in the Satsuma Rebellion of 1877. Only two decades later, the imperialism of the West began competing with the rediscovered Japanese imperialism, which swept across the Pacific Ocean and humbled both China and Russia. Number 9. 1869 – Trans-Pacific Railway and Suez Canal Open By the mid-19th century, the world repeated the benefits of the first Industrial Revolution, which changed every aspect of society, but in 1870, the second Industrial Revolution kicked in. This coincided with the opening of the Trans-Pacific Railway in the United States and the Suez Canal in Egypt, two giant infrastructural projects which ushered in a new era of globalization. The scale of production once again multiplied, 
But while the first revolution was all about textiles, steam power and iron, the second was centered around electricity, petroleum and steel. Ideas traveled faster than ever with the invention of the telephone, telegraph and radio, and the cheaper cost of steel led to a massive expansion of railway tracks. Unlike the first, the second originated simultaneously in the United States and Germany, who no longer were secondary players in world politics, but would define the following decades with their industrial might. In fact, in the very next year, Prussia would capture Paris and unify Germany in Versailles. The rise of productivity and advancement of technologies significantly improved living conditions and infrastructure, guaranteeing that crop failure would no longer result in mass starvation. Once again, positive feedback loops created more demand, which fueled the rising imperialism as nations scrambled for Africa and Asia. These overlapping interests put even more strain on the already upset balance after the rise of Japan and unification of Italy and Germany, and the stage was set for a conflict of unprecedented proportions. Number 10. The Great Eastern Crisis, 1875-1878 the Ottoman Empire had won the Crimean War and put a great amount of effort and finances in reform, but at the cost of foreign loans. The naval defeats in the 19th century led to a desire for a massive modern navy, which was built at a tremendous cost. The rise of nationalism and weakness of the government put it in a very precarious situation, and all it took was a few natural disasters in 1874 for it to crumble. The increase in taxes caused two large-scale rebellions in Herzegovina and Bulgaria. The April Uprising in Bulgaria was a well-organized rebellion, featuring guerrilla warfare by bands of revolutionaries who were highly motivated. The Ottoman response was swift and ruthless, as the Sultan sent out irregular troops to violently suppress the rebels. Despite their best efforts to reform, rebellions were springing up in every corner of the empire that had already lost parts of Greece and autonomy in Serbia and Egypt, and it was time to send a message to dissuade future rebellions. Within a month, the Bulgarian uprising was put down with thousands dead. The massacre of Batek, a village aiding the rebels, became particularly infamous, with news of the atrocities spreading throughout the world thanks to the advent of the earlier mentioned inventions as well as photography. Darwin, Oscar Wilde, Hugo, Dostoevsky and Garibaldi were among the many who spoke out against the port, but the biggest response of all was in Russia. Patriotism engulfed the nation, and in 1877, Russia stampeded through the Balkans, reaching Constantinople in under a year with the aid of Bulgarian, Serbian and Romanian volunteers. Under any other circumstances, the great powers would have intervened, but the public outcry, particularly in Great Britain, prevented them from taking any aggressive action. When the dust settled, the Treaty of San Stefano was signed in 1878, with the Ottomans ceding a huge amount of land to Serbia, Montenegro, but most of all Bulgaria. Months passed, and when public pressure waned, the great powers gathered in Berlin to adjust the treaty in order to preserve the balance of power in a meeting meant to be the new Congress of Vienna. Bismarck, who was usually calm and composed, had a short temper due to the summer heat and failed to prevent one of the biggest diplomatic disasters in history. It was clear that Russia was going too far with its demands, but the solution the rest of the European powers came up with was the Treaty of Berlin, which swung heavily in the other direction and gave minor concessions to the Balkan countries and turned Bulgaria from the biggest country in the Balkans into two small semi-independent principalities under Ottoman rule. Russia was looking at yet another Crimean War scenario if it refused, a risk Alexander II was willing to take if only Germany and Austria had given him any support. The treaty was signed and the Balkans were left dissatisfied to say the least. In the following years, this would lead to the Balkan Wars and set the stage for the Great War. We'll talk more about the Victorian era in the near future, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see it. Please consider liking, commenting and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members, whose ranks you can join via the links in the description to know our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our Discord and much more.
This is the Kings and Generals channel, and we will catch you on the next one.